Kisafi is a Swahili word. It means it's cleaner. Uh, last year around December, uh, we were just sitting around. Um, some of the co-founders had just moved out of hotels and they were living in apartments. And they're trying to figure out how to um, get the service like um, laundry, um, home cleaning. And um, basically, I tried to introduce them to um, some of the laundry uh, provide, service providers around. And uh, number one, it's pricey. Um, number two, uh, they had this issue where they had to know how many kgs they were sending. Like, really, some of us, I don't even know how much I weigh. So, <laughs> for me to weigh my laundry and then I have to take it there to figure out how much I have to pay, it, it's a hassle. Mm -hmm. And then the distance, uh, we don't have time to, sometimes your life is busy, you don't have time to start um, dropping your, like finding a place and driving there. So, uh, basically, we we're just sitting discussing this and um, we realized there was a need to this service from personal experience. Mm -hmm. And uh, also around that time I was running a retail business. I had a clothing line for children. And I was in a position where I wanted to shift focus. Um, I wasn't moving forward and I just wanted uh, to venture into something new. So um, I started doing research on it. I asked a couple of friends, um, what do you think if we brought uh, such a service to you? Uh, we wanted to bring convenience. And um, we figured that if we can have uh, be in a position where we save you the trip of going to finding a laundry service, weighing um, your laundry, it would be good. Eh? Mm -hmm. So we just came together, put our heads together, and uh, we figured let's bring this thing on a technology platform where at the click of a button, we can solve several chores. So now uh, Kisaf is concentrating on laundry, um, home cleaning service and dry cleaning service. So uh, basically we have, uh, with the laundry service, we have a standard bag that weighs up to 10 kg. You don't have to weigh the bag. Uh, we just bring the bag to your doorstep, pick up free delivery, laundry is dropped back in less than 48 hours. And uh, we also have the home cleaning service. So um, in uh, February, we launched a Close Better, where we just started with family and friends. And then um, in um, I think May, yeah, around May, we took our first we took in our first client with Open Better, and uh, from then on it's just been a journey. So basically, we can order our service online. We also have uh, an app store on Play Store, an app on Play Store. Sorry. So uh, once you place the order, we show up at your doorstep less than 48 hours. Your laundry is clean, sparkling fresh. Home service, home cleaning service. Yeah. So we decided to start with the website. Um, and response was really good on the website, but one of the things that Janet led was, and she alluded to was that we started small, right? So even our platform wasn't yet scalable when we started. Um, so we, the traffic we got to the site started leading to like slow speed and things like that. And then some people started asking about the app. That was when we actually created the app. So the app is much newer than the site. The app is about a month old, there about or less. Um, so in terms of market reception, it's been really good, right? So we've had very good problems in the last uh, three months there about. Mm -hmm. Our goal was to test out through beta for three months and maybe get our first 100 customers, get our first 500 orders or something, see what the reception would be like. Um, but the good side of it is that we actually exceeded the 100 number target in less than a month. Mm -hmm. Right now we're, you know, north of 500 customers. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we're about 4,000 orders in in just three months' time. I've actually not done much marketing or anything around it. Mm -hmm. So from a market reception standpoint, I think Janet's research made a ton of sense. The family and friends beta made a lot of sense because Nairobi is a busy city. Everyone has things to do. Yeah. Um, and it's the same thing across East Africa as well. Because what I focus on is other markets as well. I don't live here necessarily. I just come in and out. Mm -hmm. um, so we've seen the same thing in Kampala. We've seen the same exact thing in Lagos. Actually, the demand in Lagos is, you know, the size of Lagos and all that. So we're, we're looking at those markets because we've tested it, we've spoken to people, and it seems like there's a good demographic of people in the middle tier, middle income to high income, that uh, don't have the time to solve chores themselves and rather outsource it to someone that loves doing that, right? We had other options of names when we started out, right? But of course, she won, right? That was our pick. And we kind of did a vote and got people to vote on the names, and that was one that came up top. Now, there are two things about Kisafi. I, I don't speak Swahili. Um, now I'm trying to Lying. kind of pick it up as I come <laughs> in and out. Uh, but the, even the name kind of resonated with me, right? I, don't, I didn't really know what it meant, but it's an easy to understand name. It sounds good to the ear. Yeah. Um, so we tested it out in other markets as well. We spoke to guys from Lagos. We spoke to guys from Kampala. And everyone was like, yeah, you know, it makes sense. Like, 
they don't need to know the name. It's a service that yeah. is being offered that really matters, right? I uh, mean, uh, so from a personal view, I'll, I'll give you an example with music. We listen to a lot of West African music. Mm -hmm. And you can uh, meet someone who doesn't know the words, but like they're yes, singing yeah. along to it. It <laughs> appeals to them. Mm -hmm. So language, uh, I think language goes beyond just understanding what someone is saying. Yeah. And it's an African word, which is also an advantage. Yeah. It's not like we picked a French or English or mm -hmm. uh, any other language. Yeah. Yeah. We have a ton of languages. <laughs> mm -hmm. There are so many. So uh, when you walk around the estates, you can see women sitting on the roadside. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you've noticed that. Mm -hmm. So these are actually the women we approached and we explained the service to them how it works in fact this is my favorite part of the of Kisafi like interacting with these women giving them this opportunity introducing them to technology they have phones yes mm -hmm. but um, they've never known that they can use a phone to bring the business in so we just talked to these women a bunch of them we brought them into um, a workstation uh, we showed them how uh, the whole process uh, goes through, like how you people place orders. And at first they were a little skeptical, like some stayed, uh, some went away. And then after a while just word went round from the others and they're like, this is actually a pretty cool thing. Mm -hmm. And now we have like a big team, a huge team of the Mamangos. Mm -hmm. A lot of them have left the roads where they used to sit. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, they used, they used to tell me that when they sit on the road, they would get like only one because it's competition. There are so many there. Mm -hmm. So they'd get like one or two clients in a day. For us, we just bring them in. They just do the washing, do the washing. We pay them. So they're, they're earning more at Kisafi than what they used to earn at the roadside. There are two parts to the, to the platform, right? So when we started out, we started with the lens, with a western lens, right? Mm -hmm. Machine wash is all we were going to do. Yeah. Because our original model was supposed to be, we pick up the orders from you, mm -hmm. we do the sorting, we do the, you know, documentation, take images of the of the clothing, whatever we get, and then we pack and send it off to either a dry cleaning shop or a laundry partner that we have. Because besides the Mamang Goals, we also have, you know, the big dry cleaners and laundry partners that do it. We don't run a dry cleaning shop or a laundry shop necessarily. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, so that was our initial model. But when we started out, the market started asking for hand wash. Some people felt it's more personal. Some people felt the clothes are more delicate and things mm -hmm. like that. That's when we thought, let's engage in among goals and see how this model will work, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so, so what they do is essentially what they've always done. So when they come into a facility the first time, we actually test them out with the same set of people in our clothes beta that we started with, right? So we have them as our test base to, we can interview them among goals face to face, it's, the, the t it's in the taste, right? It's in our wash, your wash is not how wash it speaks necessarily. Yeah. So we give them our own clothes for about a week or two, see exactly what the output is, yeah. and then those that scale the cut that, you know, that's set by operations, then they become one of our regulars on the platform. So when an order comes in, they get a text, a notification or a call saying, there's orders for, you know, seven bags, blah, blah, who's, who's available, a bunch of them respond and it's always first come, first serve, right? Yeah. Uh, some of them have asked to be more permanent and some of them actually the same faces we we'll see yeah. over and over mm -hmm. because they love hanging out with us but yes it's essentially what they've always done mm -hmm. um, they're just doing it in a more stable environment mm -hmm. without having to sit in the sun and provide you know food drinks and stuff for them while they wait for their orders to come through mm -hmm. um, and that's that's pretty much what it is and then the machine wash side we take those dry cleaning we take those to our dry cleaning partners yeah. uh, we have about four partners now yeah. we have the big yeah dry cleaners in Nairobi that we have uh, relationships with um, so they do the dry cleaning on that end and the machine wash and all that fun stuff. We get it back, we package it, and then we send it back to our clients. I think markets is a big part of what we're looking at, right? So we also need to be smart about how we expand. We don't want to move too fast, but we also don't want to move too slow. So top priority for us is uh, coverage of where our, our cities, right? So Nairobi, we've not covered the entire part of Nairobi. Uh, we get love and hate mails each day of people that are asking us to come to their neighborhoods and things like that. Yeah. So we're trying to mark, get deeper in our existing markets. Mm -hmm. The second phase is trying to expand to other markets, right? So we'll be starting out with East Africa uh, for the start and then next year we'll start looking at West Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the, the, on the market growth end. But on the product end as well, uh, we've gotten a lot of requests, right? So if you think about chores, it's more than laundry, it's more than home cleaning, right? Mm -hmm. So a lot of folks that are early users that really love the services and do it weekly, they say, look, can't you handle more than just home cleaning and laundry for us? Yeah. Uh, the answer is yes and no. Yes, because we probably can. The platform can do anything you want it to do. Uh, but no, we need to be very careful where we expand to, right? So we're speaking to our customers. Every month we do feedback sessions, both on existing services and future services. 
Um, so we interview customers, what are your needs, what are you looking for? Because we don't want a product in market that no one uses, there's no use for that. So we've started gathering data, we're probably going to open up one or two new services. We don't want to let it out yet because we're not 100% certain yet. But it's still going to be around convenience. It's going to be around, you know, convenience services and chores largely. We want to remain uh, focused on the integrity of that. And we're going to keep our name because we want to remember where we're from. This is where we started from. Nairobi has loved us. Nairobi has shown us a ton of love. Mm. Um, so we're going to keep the name. We're going to keep the anchor in Nairobi. And then we expand out of here to everywhere else. The first time clients, they're always asking, um, how do I trust this service? How do I know that you're not bringing in? Actually, there's someone who said, how do I know these are not thieves? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> yeah, so number one, um, our cleaning assistants are vetted, like, rigorously, thoroughly. Most of them are um, people who work in hotels. Uh, they work night shifts, so during the day they are with us. Most of them have uh, worked in guest houses, um, the hospitality industry in general. So uh, before we hire them or before we take them in to partner with them, uh, there's a, a thorough uh, assessment on their background and then uh, also we have uh, cameras that they wear on their aprons for quality control and for security so in case something is misplaced something is broken or just um, let's say the client says oh I placed this thing here and it's not there at least we can review everything mm -hmm. from the cameras and, and tell so so far we've not had any complaints that's what I've told you um, before we take them in we do the um, assessment thoroughly. The other, the other layer to it as well that, that I think we also underestimate is that some people don't actually want the cleaning process recorded. Mm. So like you said, it's Nairobi. You hear people say, you know, I want it safe, but I don't want you to record my home. Right? Yeah. So we need to just kind of find the right balance yeah. uh, for that. Uh, and with those, we just, it's just to trust and we know who exactly to send, right? Mm. We send those that have been vetted and worked with us for the longest time. Yeah. Those that probably have years of history with, you know, the big name brand hotels that we don't we don't need to mention so we don't start watching out. Yeah. But we speak to the supervisors, speak to the background folks of the company, every reference and even references they didn't give us. So people they've worked with that they don't put under on the list because yeah. I know for a fact that you only put people that liked you, yeah. not people that didn't like you on yeah. the references. <laughs> so I generally, we just generally go without that. We just figure out where did you work, we find two or three people that work there, mm -hmm. have a convers an objective, unbiased conversation with them about them. Oh. And, uh, and then of course the police reports and things like mm -hmm. that also help. For now we have uh, you know, coverage Moja, Buru Buru, um, the Lovington environment, um, Westlands. Um, the Ruaka, Thika Road. We're covering Thika Road. Initially, uh, we were a little bit skeptical about Buruburu and Umoja because there are so many Mamanguos there. Mm -hmm. And um, we just started getting a lot of emails. I tell you, we listen to our clients a lot. So a lot of feedback depends on how far we expand. Mm -hmm. So back to your questions, which other areas do in, in Kenya that we plan to cover? It will depend on the feedback of our clients. Uh, we've been targeting Mombasa, uh, we've been also targeting Nanyuki. Those are areas that we've had clients reach out and tell us. And because we're uh, from there, right? <laughs> <laughs> It's because we have people reaching out. <laughs> yeah, so um, we also have, um, we've had um, responses from areas like Siokimau, Athi River. So those are some of the areas that we are considering. People underestimate planning and budgeting, right? Most people plan to start for one month mm. and the next month and that's it in the hopes that you're going to start and start making money. That only happens in movies, right? In real life, you're not going to make money in the first month, second month, third month. You might get some revenue, but it won't cover your cost. So what I tend to advise people I mentor, like great guys that are coming to build startups, is that you want to plan to not make a dollar in nine months. Mm -hmm. Calculate how much it's going to cost to run that business for nine months if you make nothing. If you can't raise that number, you can try for six. But anything less than six months plan, I think you might be setting yourself up for failure because you're being overly optimistic and thinking, okay, you're going to start making money right out the gate and there's a long line of people waiting to buy what you're selling, which isn't always true. Mm -hmm. um, so just figure out your cost, keep your costs low and plan for a six month time frame of not making any money at all. That will give you the buffer you need. Now you will make money, and then that's just kind of setting your expectations right, and then you can exceed them. 
um, in shorter time, but plan for a six month time frame at least. Twitter is hello underscore Kisafi, same thing with uh, Instagram yeah. and Facebook. I think it's been a huge communication platform. It's almost yeah. a customer service line these days. The um, where people just ask questions, people post pictures of laundry and cookies and things like that. Yeah. Um, so that, that's it. And then our phone number is on the site 07140 um, is the number and then same thing for WhatsApp. You can place orders via WhatsApp and via email at hello kisafi. Hello at kisafi.com.